we have a we have a dual approach in, in our lab, the distributed computing lab. We have a dual approach. We we have a theoretical approach and a practical approach. This is Dr. Igor Zabolci, who recently graduated from the IC school at EPFL. In a previous video, we discussed how his research enables to better understand the theoretical capabilities of RDMAs, which are hardware technologies that enable distant machines to directly access a memory without involving the local CPU. But interestingly, Igor's research is not purely theoretical. On the practical front, we, we build systems, practical systems, that uh, try to uh, leverage the benefits of RDMA, so the, the ones they mentioned, uh, speed and, and interesting semantics. In particular, this practical approach aims to solve more efficiently some fundamental problems of distributed computing. We're, we're working on a framework, an ever-growing framework, uh, for solving distributed computing problems using RDMA. And so far, we're focusing on fundamental primitives in distributed computing, such as uh, consensus or broadcast. We talked about consensus and broadcast in previous videos. Essentially, all modern algorithms on the internet rely on some form of consensus or broadcast. In the previous video with Igor, we saw that the semantics of RDMAs enabled provably faster and more robust solutions to these problems. Crucially, this is not a mere theoretical observation. On the practical side, we were able to leverage both the semantics and the kind of raw speed of RDMA to create a state machine replication system, which can uh, replicate uh, applications with uh, you know, common case latency around one microsecond, and um, it can fail over in case of, uh, of crashes um, in less than a millisecond. So this is significantly better than in the state of the art. So what are the next steps? Uh, like I said, we're, um, we're building this framework for distributed computing using RDMA. Uh, so far, we've been focusing on crash failures which are traditionally more simple, and this is also the case uh, with RDMA. But uh, the, the next steps are for uh, Byzantine fault-tolerant computing. So this is a, an, an important class of failures to tolerate, uh, not, not least because of you know, the emergence of a blockchain. Um, so, so yeah, we're, we're heading in that direction, and uh, yeah, we're, we're trying to put into practice some of the ideas that we already have in the theoretical realm about better algorithms for Byzantine fault tolerant con uh, you know, computing. What about open research challenges? So there are some uh, very interesting um, uh, research challenges in this space. Um, and uh, they, are, they kind of revolve around signatures, or this is kind of one, one big challenge. Uh, so many, many Byzantine fault tolerant algorithms require cryptographic uh, digital signatures, which essentially help uh, help a process or a participant prove that somebody said something. You know. So th this is a, these are uh, uh, widely used for, for Byzantine uh, fault-tolerant algorithms. But signatures are quite expensive, and com especially compared to, the, the, to RDMA, which, uh, like I said, uh, has latencies of around one microsecond. Well, uh, uh, creating or, s or verifying a signature can take up to 30 times more uh, more than a single RDMA operation. So suddenly you can see how uh, signatures can become the dominant cost of, of, a, uh, of a Byzantine fault tolerant algorithm. So kind of the, the challenge is to figure out how many signatures do, you, do we need? Uh, in what situations can we you know, do without signatures? So yeah, explore this space a little bit. 